Y'all getting any rain up here, Wayne? What way would that be? I seen you was from Dallas. What business is it of yours? Where I'm from? <laughs> Once you learn these three shots, you'll never be able to watch the same scene again. But before I teach you the one technique that every filmmaker uses, you have to learn what dirtying the frame means. So dirtying the frame is a common tool used for most filmmakers, and essentially it's putting something in front of the lens to give the shot more depth. But you probably already knew that. This is something that you might see in a film where some creepy guy's watching through the bushes of something, or even more so, let's say you have a shot that doesn't feel dynamic enough, you might wanna put a tree or a vehicle or something in the foreground to give it movement. For example, if you're shooting a shot within a house, maybe having something in the foreground could give you a little bit more depth and information about where we are within the space. But most commonly, dirtying the frame can be used to give a shot better motion. Let's say you have a chase scene happening, but from a wide angle, it really doesn't seem like a lot is happening. Putting stuff in the foreground of the shot can create more movement, like in our short film Clementine, I wanted it to give this feeling of kinetic energy. So we put these shrubs in the foreground of the shot that breeze past the camera to give it more speed. Rule of thumb for dirtying the frame, giving a shot motion, is the closer something is to the lens, the more motion it creates. The further away something is from the lens, the less kinetic energy it gives. So if you feel like you have a shot that doesn't have that additional depth, Putting stuff in the foreground gives it speed, motion. This is why when you watch a car commercial, the camera rides very close to the ground because you're getting a lot more passing by the lens. So now that we know the basics of dirtying the frame, I'm gonna teach you the dirtiest trick. <laughs> this three shot sequence you can see in I'd say 90% of Hollywood movies. This is the easiest sequence of shots to give yourself a dynamic scene. Over the shoulder, over the shoulder, two shot. And we'll add an additional one at the end of this to give you a little bit more tools in the toolkit. But this is my go-to standard shot for when it comes to a dialogue scene between characters. Take for example, this scene that we shot for our movie Freelancer. Chase, our main character, exits his van, walks to a couple who's on the street after a serious accident has happened, and he must then now leave. This scene was captured in a sequence of seven shots. Here's how we placed it together. We have this wide shot of Chase exiting the van. This establishes the space and gives us kind of our Hollywood moment. Then we cut into the three shot sequence. Over the shoulder of Chase revealing Trevor, over the shoulder of Trevor revealing Chase, and then a two shot of the two characters. And the reason why this works so effectively is because you're acting as an observer as a scene plays out and getting the depth over someone's shoulder means that you're not necessarily in their boots, rather experiencing what they're experiencing. Now, you could shoot this scene differently, like what we did in our film Companionship, where we filmed the dialogue scene at a table from the POV of both characters. Now, this does change it up a bit, it doesn't give the same effect as an over-the-shoulder shot. When you live in someone's POV, it explains a different feeling. I've shot an entire feature film through someone's POV, and I still resort to an over-the-shoulder shot. It tells the perspective over someone's shoulder as if you're an audience member watching it as opposed to being the character. He was so drunk that not only could he not get it up, but he also fell over and couldn't get back up. What did you do? I left him there. What could I do? It was 200 pounds of dead weight. I think it has something to do with the fact that I told everyone at the office about it. Logically, he should be embarrassed. I suppose some anger's only natural. No! Don't say that. Don't take his side. He's an asshole. Sorry, I just thought... Don't! Don't say sorry. Before we sort of hammer in the nails on over the shoulder, over the shoulder, wide or two shot, you can actually do a different style of shooting a dialogue scene. For example, you could shoot it just through a two shot, something similar to what, let's say, the West Wing does, is a long one take. But not having shot diversity might shoot yourself in the foot when it comes to the edit. The reason why most films shoot on multiple angles is not necessarily specifically from a creative pursuit, but it's to have more options within the edit. If you shoot just one take, you're only gonna have that one take. And this was some, this was the stark realization we really 
realized when we filmed our POV feature film, Dead Rush, where there was no options to cut to any angles. What you see is what you get. But when you shoot over the shoulder and over the shoulder, what you're doing is you're hiding one character and revealing the other and vice versa, which then can give you the option to bounce between your two characters, so long as you follow this one rule. <laughs> 180 rule kind of works better if you look top down. So you have your two characters and then your camera sort of at the side of your two characters. You can go 180 degrees on either side of those characters. If you break that 180, you're breaking the 180 rule, therefore affecting your eye line. This will seem kind of jarring to your audience, therefore breaking them out of the scene. This is why when you watch a scene between two characters dirtying the frame and playing over the shoulder, it will always go one character looking left to right and the other character looking right to left or vice versa. This is how dynamic scenes are made. Then that two shot of the two characters will stay on the 180 degree of that over the shoulder, over the shoulder playbook, therefore creating the scene, the stage that the audience can play with him. Like I said before, this isn't the only way you can shoot a sequence. Say it so the whole band can hear you. I'm upset. The next shot I want to throw in is an insert shot. Now, insert shots usually are done by close-ups or mediums, but this is going to be your fourth shot on your arsenal of three. Well, now it's four. So four, your four shot sequence that will be incredibly dynamic. So for example, in our short film, Freelancer, we shot this sequence with four shots. We have an over the shoulder of Chase, over the shoulder of Trevor, a two shot of the two of them by the vehicle, and our fourth shot is an insert of Chase removing this monitor. Action. It can either be an element of what your character is going through or to dive your audience deeper into what the world is that we're building within the film. Whenever you're writing your script and you're building out the scene of two characters, can you incorporate a close-up to therefore row whatever character development you're happening within the two characters. Maybe the one looks out the window and you see their POV looking out the window or a detail of something by their shoes. I could forget thing that I failed to mention was the fact that you can actually break the 180 rule. And they do this in the movie Whiplash to create some more tension within the scene. You can play with error in order for your audience to feel uncomfortable or for them to acknowledge something more. Now if you guys do want to play around with shots within your film, the best way to do it is with a shot list and storyboard. And I've created actually free downloadable templates you can get off of my store well, there'll be a link to in the description below. This is how I do all of my shot lists and storyboards for my movies. It's not the most conventional way of doing storyboards or shot lists, but it's what works for me. So what you'll see on your columns is you'll have action, direction, scene number, and of course the shot. And within the action, this is what happens within the scene. So it gives you a little bit about what's the blocking gonna be, girl running down hallway, um, dead bird on window, and then for the shots, this will be the actual shots that you capture, where the camera's gonna be, the camera movement, and then you have your scene number on the other side, which will give you some context of where it is at in the script so that you can follow it. This is your on-set director guide, and I have a link to it for free in the description below. There's also a directions column, so if you need a little bit of assistance with just having like, I want to make this an emotional scene that's a development for our main character. You can throw that in there. Also, you guys can come uh, say hi to my dad. Hey. Stay fancy, stay classy, and Merry Christmas if it's Christmas for you. It's the Christmas times. I wish I could.